Thank you for attending the February session of the CPS Web Tips uh, for Wind, Wind Shuttle. Um, just a quick housekeeping item. Um, we'll have everybody make sure they're muted. I think you might automatically be muted, but uh, there's quite a few attendees on today, so we'll get that out of the way. And then if you have any questions while I'm going through the uh, presentation, feel free to uh, type them in the, uh, the, the comment question box, and, and uh, Tara will check that. You know, periodically and, and let me know if we need to answer any questions as we're going along. Um, otherwise, we can take any questions you might have at the end of the session. Um, so my name is Jason King, and I recently joined CPS back in November of last year. Uh, prior to that, I was with Johnsonville Sausage, and I was responsible for supporting Johnsonville's SAP Material Master data, uh, which included Obviously, material master bill of materials, routings, um, recipes, things like that, and also their PLM implementation, which was SAP PLM, um, included uh, SAP's doc management system, things like that, and uh, our labeling systems and workflow systems. In addition to that, I was the, uh, the sole wind shuttle developer for quite a long time there, um, and then. Like I said, I recently left and joined CPS, and uh, prior to coming to CPS, I was also the uh, leader of the Wisconsin Wind Shuttle User Group, uh, which is now being led by uh, Jeremy Dippo from Rockwell. So uh, that's just a little bit about me, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is a new feature in Wind Shuttle 11, in User Governance 11, uh, called Excel-based workflows. So what is an Excel-based workflow? Um, basically, it's combining uh, a few different things, three different things, actually. So it's taking the workflow component from the Composer tool. It's taking a script and a template that you might already have developed uh, as an Excel template, and then also the publishing process that you'd have with your user governance site or your central site. Um, just want to make a note that this is a new feature that's available in uh, Foundation 11 and uh, Studio 11, so um, if you're still on Central or 10, you'd have to upgrade in order to do that. But um, yeah, so basically it's just covering these three components, combining them together, and uh, and making it more easy to use uh, a workflow component with your Excel script templates. So why would you want to do that instead of just creating a form with the Composer tool, doing a form and a workflow? Um, Generally, when you have mass data scenarios where maybe you're migrating a newly acquired company to your SAP system or you're extending material master data or any kind of master data that you might have to a new plant that's being brought online, um, you're dealing with large amounts of data. And when you have a form, really, that's it's more geared towards doing like one material at a time, or one vendor at a time, and so on and so forth. So using mass data is a lot easier in Excel. So you might want to utilize existing scripts that you already have um, for that mass data maintenance or creation. And just adding a workflow piece around to it so that people can add to the Excel file and then the right people can approve it could be very beneficial. Um, a lot of companies have an extensive library of scripts that are already in existence, and it would be nice for them to just add the workflow piece to that instead of having to go through and develop a form for each of their processes as well. So kind of is a middle step between being just a studio runner, or not a runner, but a studio company, one shuttle studio customer, um, you know, going to the, the forms and workflow. This is more the middle ground where you can just take the Excel files that you have that have your scripts embedded into them and add the workflow piece to it. Uh, also, the uh, journal entry tool is already Excel-based, so a lot, of, a lot of companies are looking for a solution where they can add a workflow to that that's more than just the one or two step approval process, more of a customized workflow. So that's what we're going to cover today. Um, I'm going to go over exactly how we built that and then how we use it as a runner. Um, and, then, and then how it works as an as a overall process. So some things to keep in mind, um, you know, there's some, there's some kind of limitations to using an Excel-based workflow. 
in the wind shuttle product. So it doesn't allow for concurrent ed editing of the Excel file. So if somebody has completed their task and, and done all of the additions to the Excel file or they've done their approval and maybe they had to review it, but they didn't close the file or check it back in, um, and you go to do your your approval or your task next, you, know, you might run into an error that you have to get a hold of the person and say, hey, can you close the file? So that's one limitation. Um, another one is everybody can see the data that's in the file up to the point where it's been edited. So it's just something to keep in mind if there's any kind of data in there that certain people shouldn't be seeing. It's, there's really no control over that. They can also edit anything in there. You'd have to use some kind of macro or something um, that you develop on your own to, to kind of limit those kinds of things. And then some compo composer features, uh, like some of the plugins and, and the uh, participant resolvers and things like that, have to be used a little differently or in some cases aren't available. Um, and in this, uh, in this PowerPoint deck, uh, in the notes section of this particular slide, I have all that listed. And I could probably exit out and jump back in here and expand this a little bit. Uh, it doesn't get bigger. But uh, so basically, these are the things I'm talking about down here. So, you know, allowing a replacement property is not supported from a browser. But again, Windshuttle really recommends that any approval tasks or activities are completed in the, in the Excel add-in. So this one shouldn't be a big deal. Um, challenge on approval is not supported in that add-in. And then, again, there's just some different things that have to happen, um, maybe a little bit differently than if you were creating a normal workflow in Composer. You might have to add in a weight plugin. You might have to add in an approval node before you use some of these other plugins in order to get them to work properly. So just some things to keep in mind. Okay. So now what I want to do is kind of go through a demo of the product and, and how you would utilize this. Okay, so first thing we want to do is navigate out to our user governance site. Whoops, log in there. And then what we're going to want to do is go into the composer tool because we need to build that custom workflow that we want to use. Okay, so we're going to create a new solution. We'll just call it Web Tips. So workflow demo. And we're going to select the Excel workflow option here. Okay. You choose your foundation site. And then data library. Now you can either use an existing data library or you can create your own. I'm just going to show you the option of creating your own. So we could just call it tips workflow. Demo, data files. Okay, description is not required. You can add it if you'd like. Then you go ahead and hit create. You should get a message back that it was created successfully. And then the other option you have is you can either hit next and create some swim lanes, or you can hit finish and create those swim lanes once you're in the composer tool. We'll just click finish right now and add them in when we get in here. So we're going to come into the workflow tool, okay, and we are going to add a few swim lanes. So first we'll add, let's just say, the example I have, the existing script that I have is basically just changing product description on, let's say, a finished good. So let's say we need brand manager approval for that. So I'm going to utilize the person type. Normally you wouldn't do this. You'd want to have um, a more complex participant resolver that can get to the right person, maybe through a SharePoint list or, or group. Um, I'm just using this so that all the tasks, as we go through it later, come to me so that we can potentially show um, the completion of a task later on. So we're just going to call this one Brand Manager. We'll add another one called Master Data. And they need to check and make sure that every, all the naming conventions that you might have are, are met or 
if this name isn't already used on a product somewhere. And then we'll also have a task for the person that's going to run the script. Maybe it's not the master data team. Right? I'm not going to use the process owner, so I'm actually just going to move that to the bottom, just get it out of the way. I'm going to delete this transition between the start and end because we're going to add some things in between there. Right? So first thing we want to do is give the brand manager the option to approve. Right? So add an approval node. Or brand manager approval. Right, and then there's some things in the uh, in the options here that we might want to uh, adjust. So if we come down to the uh, the, U the UI support section, okay, we might want to um, allow replacement. So what this means is if somebody needs to add data to the file, they can check it out, add the data, and then check back in a new version for the next person. Um, in this case, we're just going to do some approvals and then somebody's going to run it, so we don't need to change that. Um, but one that I do recommend all the time is the comments required. I like to use on reject. You could do always, and then even when they approve it, they have to put in a comment, but generally nobody usually cares when somebody approves something. It's only when they reject that they want to understand why. So I put on reject. And then require review. Um, you can leave that to false. I mean, generally, you wouldn't be going through this process if you weren't going to have somebody actually open the file and look at it. But by changing this to true, you can force them to open up the Excel file and take a look at it. So there's just a couple things to kind of keep in mind as you're setting up the approval nodes. From there, we want to do another one for the master data team. So let's just call it master data approval. Right. Again, we want to come down and potentially set our, uh, a different options here. So we want to make them tell us why they might reject it and then also make sure that they have a look at it. Right. From there, we'll add an activity for the script runner so that they can then run the script. They get notified that everything's been approved and they can run it. Call that. On script, use a nice little clever name. Um, another thing to keep in mind here too is you can set a plugin that could actually just happen after the master data approval. I'm going to put this in, but you could delete it. But you can actually just set this to auto run the script. So the plugin you'd choose then would be your Wind Shuttle auto run, right? And then you'd set your plugin parameters. Um, instructions for that on support.windshow.com and talk about what needs to be set there but um, you want to set synchronous to false because you want this to finish before it would move on to anything else or move on to complete but you could set that to auto run the, uh, the, the data file that would be attached to this workflow right, if you wanted to otherwise you could just have somebody automatically or not automatically but manually run it uh, after the approvals are done Okay, so now we have, I'm going to bring this end down here and we'll call that, oops, process complete. Okay, we'll add another N in case we reject at the brand manager level or even at the master data level. Just rename those. Pretty simple. Now I just need to put in our transition so that our process actually flows. So from the start, the first thing that we're going to do is come down to the brand manager and he might reject it or if he approves it, it'll go on to master data. So let me just set the conditions by right clicking on, the, on those transitions. And it, when it's at master data, they might reject it. Or if they approve it, it'll go down to the script runner. Okay. 
And then once the script runner completes their task, the process would be complete. If it gets rejected, then the, the originator, the person that submitted the request, would then just have to um, kind of take a look at why it was rejected and start a new request. You can add in, you know, a loop where it goes through and it's not, you know, the, the loop isn't complete until, you know, the person is given the opportunity to resubmit or cancel the, uh, you know, the, the request if, if things didn't need to be done. But this is just for simplicity's sake in the demo. We're just going to have a, a simple two-level approval. You can make this as complex as you'd want. Okay, so at that point, we'll go to our form. Uh, really with the form, all you really want to do is just direct the user in case they were to click on the link for the form. And I'm just going to type in a group name here. But all you really want to do in this situation is direct them back to use the, the Studio add-in in the Excel file. Because that's really what uh, WinShuttle recommends. It's what's going to work best. So maybe we add a text area. Oops. Just one is needed. Okay. So maybe we say instructions. And then we'll add a default text. We use Studio. There we go. That's all you really need on the form. Just to kind of tell them don't use the form. So from there, we're pretty much done. We have our, our custom Excel workflow created. Now we just need to deploy that. So we would go out to deploy our solution. It's going to validate. It's going to save. And then here's our, it says form site, which is somewhat confusing because we're really looking at our user governance site here. That's okay. That's what you want to have. And then your name of your solution and hit OK. I'm going to save it and then it's going to give you the opportunity to use a, a deployment profile. I'm just going to use the default because I know that's set up to do what I need. I'm going to hit OK. And the solution is successfully deployed. So we'll hit OK there. Now, at this point is where you want to open up Studio to get your, uh, your WinShuttle script that you want to associate with this new custom workflow that we've just built. So we'll open up Studio 11, and I'm going to have to log in, which hopefully doesn't take too long. Sometimes you never know. I can just spin this around and get it to go fast. There we go. Okay. So you'd want to go open your script that you have so you can navigate to it wherever you might have it on your computer. So I have one set up here for our demo. So we'll open that up. And basically, this is just your your typical submitting your script to foundation, like if you wanted to get it approved to use it in production. There's just going to be a difference when we start completing the tasks here. So you know, I have my script file name. Everything looks good there. And all I just did here was copy this because I'm going to need it on the next screen. So I hit Next, and it's going to go to my data template. And it's already out on the server. I'm just going to say, yeah, I want to create a new version. I'm going to paste that in. So now I have my data template set up. I'm going to hit Next. And again, it's already out there, but I'm going to say, yes, please create a new version. It's going to give me the opportunity to, rev to review or, or add supporting documents and then review everything. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit Submit. So it's going to go through that process, then it should tell me it was successful, it does, and then it'll close my script. Now, what's great about WinShuttle 11 is I don't have to navigate out to my user governance site. I'm just going to close Composer. I don't have to navigate out to the user governance site and find the task out here. In WinShuttle 11, this is all built in into the Studio interface. So my workflow tasks are now right here. My task comes up. And I can complete it right in, right in the application itself. 
Submit here is the first re the first task of your submission to foundation uh, as far as the script is concerned. And this is the part where you associate your script with that new workflow that we've created. So you'd select your data reviewer right here. And then normally the options you'd have would be no data review process, review and post one step, review and post separately. But now you have this select custom workflow. So what I'm going to do is open that up. And as you can see, I've been playing around in here. But um, we're going to go ahead and select the one that we just created. Okay. Hit OK. And then it's going to also give you the opportunity to choose which SAP server you want to use. So you select that. And then you go ahead and hit Complete Task. The task has been successfully completed. Close. And then it will go to whoever needs to review it. So in this case, it obviously came to me because I had it set up that way. So I would approve that. Click Approve. That's been successful. I can hit Close. Now that, that data template is out on the governance site, and anyone can go download it, add their data in, and then submit it to that workflow process to get approved, and then to run it. So from here, it's going to hit Home to refresh the page. Um, we go out to our, our data templates. And we're going to find that we have our new data template out here. So I could download a copy of that right to my desktop. I'm just going to replace that. So that's going to go ahead and download. And then what I want to do is open that file up in Excel. I'm going to click Enable Editing. Okay. I'm just going to put in a material number and maybe my new description, obviously. So let's say it's a new name for my graphic shirt. Right. So that's all I needed to do. Maybe I had a few of them. I could add a few more lines if I wanted to, but that's good enough for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. And then what I want to do is use my add-in to then submit this file to Foundation, and then it'll start that workflow process that we created where it goes through the brand manager approval, and then the material master team approval, and then to the person that's going to run the script. Now you notice that I don't have my, my tab up here, and that's because uh, in our environment here at CPS, we have to have the WinShuttle 10X script, uh, or the Win WinShuttle 10X program, a transaction and query, installed and we also have to have 11 because we work with both. When you have both of those add-ins installed, they don't play well in the sandbox. They kind of fight with each other and end up disabling each other. So um, for those of you who don't know, here's a free lesson on how to quickly add those back in. And go to File, and go to Options, and go to my add-ins. And then I want to choose in this Manage Drop down box, I want to choose COM add ins and click go. And then I get a list of all the disabled add ons I have. So you can see we have journal entry, query transaction. I'm just going to turn on the studio one because that's the one I need for right now. Click OK. Now I have my tab. I'm going to have to log in again here because in normal scenario you would you'd be logging in and getting your task or, or submitting your script on your own. I'm just going to do it here as same user that I've been using. For whatever reason on our system, this login generally takes quite a while. And it doesn't really show you that it's logging in, so you just kind of sit here and wonder if it worked. But as long as I type that password in correctly, it should come right up. But again, that's, you know, as you go through and um, go to File and Options, that's how you can enable any of the add-ins that get disabled. Uh, so now you see I have all my my studio options here for Studio 11. Uh, there's another tab called WinShuttle Foundation. So I can come in here and I could validate if I wanted to, if I had validation turned on. On this particular script, I don't, as you can see. I could simulate, make sure everything looked good. Um, but what I can't do is I wouldn't be able to run. I'd have to go through the approval process. Okay? So I have all my data in the way that I want it to, so I'm going to click on the Foundation tab. 
Okay, and then I'm going to click Submit to Foundation. And that's going to send it to Foundation to start that workflow process that we created. So it's very similar to when you submit a script, except you're just going to get one screen for the data file, one for the supporting documents, your summary review, and then you'll be able to submit it. So let's just say Web Tips, Excel Workflow, Demo 1, good enough. We'll hit next. We've got our supporting documents. I don't have anything to add in this instance, so I'm going to hit next. Hit from there. We can review everything and then hit submit. Okay, the file has been successfully submitted. So now what it's going to do, that was basically the start note in our workflow, and then it's going to close your file. Um, and then you would just normally close Excel until you get a task. You know, maybe be notified via email that you have a task, um, but you really have the option to complete your tasks. You, know, you click tasks here, and it would show you what's out there. Um, nothing showed up right now, but you have the option to do your tasks in Excel here. You could do it potentially from Studio if you again went to your tasks, okay, or you could do it from the uh, the user governance site itself if you went into hit home, you know, eventually it would show up in your task. Okay. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble in our system today with the uh everything worked great yesterday, but today I'm having a little bit of trouble with the um, the workflow worker. Um, so running into some issues with that. So that my tasks haven't been coming through as of about nine o'clock this morning just to freak me out, you know, before I have to do the the presentation. So what I've done is actually kind of taken some images here to show you what it looks like when a task comes through. So the approval task in Excel, once you click that task button, it would show up and you'd see your manager review. And it looks very, very similar to what you would see in Studio. So because of the fact that we went ahead and clicked our um, force the review, what we'd have to do is click this and it would open up Excel. And then once that's done, it will allow you to approve. Otherwise, even though you click approve and even complete, it won't do anything until you've opened that file up and looked at it. Um, if you didn't have that selected, you wouldn't have to. Again, if we had clicked reject here too, it would force a comment, whereas if I clicked approve, I could just complete the task. So that's one example. The other example um, is in the email. So you'd get an email and you have a link. Again, that's going to take you to the uh, your Excel file that's out on your user governance site. If you happen to click this main page, that would take you to the form. And again, that would direct you back to opening up the file. The other thing is you have the Excel file attached to, and there's some options you can um, you can manipulate within your uh, your approval node or your activity node to say send the link, send the file, or send both. So that's something to keep in mind too if you want to do something like that. But for the most part, that is how you would use and create an Excel workflow using the Composer tool. Um, and again, the use cases are when you want to do that mass data maintenance, when you want to do, um, you know, route like journal entry files that are already Excel based or trying to utilize all these scripts that you might have already created without having to go through the process of, you know, creating forms and things like that. It's just a lot of different use cases you might have for, for needing a solution. It's just another tool in the toolbox that one shuttle offers. So with that, if, uh, if there are any questions, I don't know if you saw anything in there, Tara, but you can do questions now if you'd like. Thanks, Jason. Um, I don't see any questions or any raised hands. Does anyone have anything you'd like to ask Jason or see again? Okay. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I'd really like to thank everybody for the time. I think we have some events coming up um, in the Ohio area on right. Thursday, March 9th from 1 to 4. Uh, we've got the Ohio Wog. Rockwell is going to be bringing a, a great uh, great story to that party and a lot of, a lot of opportunity to learn and mingle there. And then there's, uh, there's obviously the Lean Utopia get-together after at the Burntwood Tavern. Um, and then... Thursday, March 16th at 11 is the Web Tips for the March session. 
going to cover design for user experience with, uh, with forms. Um, so please feel free to register for any of that. You can do that through clearprocesssolutions.com. And again, any of these, if you miss this or you feel like somebody else might benefit from hearing this, all the web tip recordings can be found on YouTube. Okay, and then uh, you know, we are offering the five free hours of solution care, so if you wanted to take advantage of that, these are some of the great benefits of, of doing that. Um, so feel free to contact us if you'd like to, to participate in that. Um, and with that, uh, just a few other nice things about CPS and the great things that we're doing that we can do for you. Um, with that, that's really all I had. So, again, thank you everybody for your time. I hope it was informative and, and I appreciate it. And uh, have a great day.